I would prefer to have um, uh, uh, the best president, uh, uh, the best president of Nigerian origin. And if you ask me, if I will, if you are going to tell, if you are going to ask me, who do I think will make the best president? I would say, and it's going to upset a lot of people. But I would say Peter will be, Peter will be, will, will just will be an absolutely fabulous uh, president. If Peter will be with president of Nigeria, Nigeria would just, would, I mean, would be like Dubai in a matter of years. But now. Zev. Look, you know, we need people like this. I'm so proud of Governor Obi. I, I listened to him today and, you know, I was taught, like, do we have fellows like this in Nigeria? I'm very proud of this man. Look at everything that he has touched. He made money for himself in the bar of leadership in Nigeria. He raised the bar of leadership in Nigeria. Since he left office, can you believe that this man does not take anything, not even like a, a, a penny from the Anambra State Government? And while he was there, you know, he was a man that built up a number state. You know, a number state used to be almost educationally disadvantaged. And then in less than two years, he brought them to be number one. He left their, that state with a reserve. Look, you know, we need people like this. I'm so proud of God. How can you say the best candidate? In terms of education, this man is the least educationally you know, uh, qualified. You know, Brazil, I think, back has a master's for, in international relations from the Iraqi University. Bonatin, who has a first class degree from Chicago State University. Rabbi Musa Kwankas, who has a PhD in water engineering. This man has a third class, or maybe a, sorry, a second class lower, in, uh, I think, in the philosophy from the University of Nigeria. So, in terms of education, he is not as qualified as the other. In terms of achievements while in office, it doesn't come close to any of them at all. So, but in their own mindset, you know, there's a lot of emotional, there's a lot of sentiment, and it comes back to what happened, you know, during the war. So I understand that a lot of them are going to attack me. But look, at the end of the day, if you hold the election 10 times, Peter Obi is still not going to win. Peter Obi should go back and revisit what I told him. I told him that the best part to the presidency for him is to run as Waziri Atiku of Bakas, uh, uh, running mate, and then be loyal to him while he's in office, and then when Waziri Atiku of Bakas finishes his tenure, naturally the baton will change from the president to him. He didn't listen to me. Well, good luck to him. This is what happened when you are leaving all the rest of your life packaging lies upon lies because of money that people are paying you. So, this man has been living all his life packaging lies. Once you pay him, he will be there for you to talk even what is against his own integrity. Recently, Shewon Kebandoya of Chinese Television hosted Reno Mokri on his own platform, Mike on Podcast, where he interviewed him about the state of the nation and politics. Reno Mokri was ranting on the interview saying that Pitobi is not the best candidate Nigeria would have, that he wanted Pitobi to be the running mate to Waziri Atiku Abubakar, and after that, Pitobi will now prepare to become the president of Nigeria. Say, come on. Does this man really understand that internet does not lie? Does this man really know that uh, anything you say on the internet will be there? How can you continue to say in so many times, this is not just once, up to three consecutive times, Reno have told Nigerians that Pitobi will be the best candidate, will be the best president, that if Pitobi eventually become the president of Nigeria, that Nigeria would be like Dubai. Wow. So we are so surprised seeing when he's now talking opposite of it, but don't blame him. I believe this man don't have job. So you need to do something to cater for his family and himself. You know, he have two uh, families and the wife he has abandoned with his children and also uh, the Ethiopian woman that uh, he got married lately. So he have a lot of responsibility. I, I don't really know if he's up to his responsibility, but as a man with two wives, with two uh, families, so many children, he have to cater for so many of them. And I believe the only way he can do this, the hostel he built, in Nigeria, student hostel can't do that, can't afford such, you know, such expenses for him. He have to, you know, go through uh, so many paymasters to tarnish people's image. But I think this is a very dangerous thing he's doing because I don't know if this man is thinking about tomorrow. How will my children feel? What will come out if maybe your son come out and say, this is Reno Mokri's son. How will people look at you? You know what is going on now? You know, so many people, especially from the APC camp now, are happy with him because he's working with them. They don't still know this man. They don't still know that this man is like a chameleon, that this man will eventually turn opposite against them when 2027 comes, because eventually Atiku Abubakar is still going to pay Reno Mokri.
in 2027 to canvass for pdp so that is the type apc now will be furious with him but for us we are not angry with him but we just uh, want to tell the world whom he is we just want to expose his lies so there is nothing that he will do that will make us to be angry because we already know him it is people that don't know him that will continue to follow him that will continue to believe what he's saying so this is what reno mokere have been packaging and this issue of um case of pito b is not um only a reason why i am saying this when you look at what he's saying today talking about apc and bonda tinumbu go and look at what reno mokere said about tinumbu before and look at what he's saying about now you could see that there is something on the new that a lot of money have gone through the backyard door so that is the situation we are facing in nigeria now let me come to talk about the issue he raised on my on broadcast with Shane Woke Bandoye. He was talking about that Pitobi did not build school. He, the school he was talking about is blocks. Come on. We have enough school in Nigeria, but we don't have the schooling system in Nigeria. There is a difference between school and the schooling system. Pitobi brought a schooling system in Anambra State. I thank God it was Reno Mokri that even told us this before I knew about it. On that Pitobi, Anambra students, they became number one in Neko in Wayek in Nigeria. And recently, look at the competition they won against top global institutions. We are talking about human capital development. What does it take in my state, even where Reno came from? Go to Ishekiri. You will see so many abandoned primary schools. Government built that for nothing. So, someone who is talking like this, when he becomes president tomorrow, Nigeria is gone because he don't even know what to do. He don't know that building people is more important than building blocks. There are a lot of blocks, there are a lot of institutions, but people are going coming out without jobs. Anambra State is a state that has lowest level of un un unemployment in West Africa. Go and check my facts. So it is not all about building schools, building blocks. It is all about building people. The world is all about the people. The nation is all about the people. And that is why Reno have been going on deceiving Nigerians that the donor is increasing because of buy Nigeria, grow Nigeria, he's sweet. Oh my God. See, Nigerians never cease to amaze me. There is no... See, all politicians and people who follow politicians, they have one way or the other. This, I would say, it, it is an inborn skills, a psychological um, mechanism of deceiving people. But they have been using our uh, foreign reserve to make sure that they defend the Naira. And this is so un unpatriotic. This is so dangerous because it's going to sink Nigeria. And he understood that people now knew his lies because even um, Naira Matrix and so many, uh, like Blomberg, they published the real fact that Nigeria CBM is using the forest reserve to defend Naira. So Reno Mokri, knowing that, oh, people really bust these lies that I'm lying, let me go back and look for other things to train. How long can we continue like this, you know, in Nigeria? So this is the lies of Reno Mokri. I would prefer to have um, uh, uh, the best president, uh, uh, um, the best president of Nigerian origin. And if you ask me, if, I will, if you're going to tell, if you're going to ask me who do I think will make the best president, I would say, and it's going to upset a lot of people, but I would say Peter will be, Peter Obi would, would just would be an absolutely fabulous uh, president. If Peter Obi were president of Nigeria, Nigeria would just would, would, I mean, would be like Dubai in a matter of years. But now, look, you know, we need people like this. I'm so proud of Governor Obi. And I listened to him today, and you know, I was taught like, do we have fellows like this in Nigeria? I'm very proud of this man. Look at everything that he has touched. He made money for himself in the bar of leadership in Nigeria. He raised the bar of leadership in Nigeria. Since he left office, can you believe that this man does not take anything, not even like a, a, a penny from the Anambra State government? And while he was there, you know, he was a man that built up Anambra State. You know, Anambra State used to be almost educationally disadvantaged. And then in less than two years, he brought them to be number one. He left their, that state with a reserve. Look, you know, we need people like this. I'm so proud of God. How can you say the best candidate? In terms of education, this man is the least educationally you know, uh, qualified. You know, Wazir Atikovak has a master's before in international relations from Agai Western University. Bonatin, who has a first class degree from Chicago State University. Rabbi Musa Kwankas, who has a PhD in water engineering. This man has a third class, or maybe a, sorry, second class lower. In, uh, I think in uh, philosophy from the University of Nigeria. So in terms of education, he is not as qualified as the other. In terms of achievements while in office, it doesn't come close to any of them at all. 
So, but in their own mindset, you know, there's a lot of emotional, there's a lot of sentiment, and it comes back to what happened, you know, during the war. So I understand that. A lot of them are going to attack me. But look, at the end of the day, if you hold the election 10 times, Peter Obi is still not going to win. Peter Obi should go back and revisit what I told him. I told him that the best part to the presidency for him is to run as Waziri Atiku of Bakas uh, 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 running mate and then be loyal to him while he's in office. And then when Waziri Atiku of Bakas finishes his tenure, naturally the baton will change from the president to him. He didn't listen to me. Well, good luck to him.